Hey everyone, it's Richard Cannell here from Small Island Gardener. Today is an awesome day. It's January 3rd, it's a new year, and that means it's time to start some seeds. Hopefully as I run through the process today, there's a trick or two that you're able to pick up. So, without further ado, let's begin. The first thing that I'm going to do is sift the soil. This is done because it's not a good idea to have large chunks inside of the cells as it's really difficult for those new and young roots to navigate their way through it. And I like to use a potting mix versus a seed starting mix because the potting mix has nutrition in it so I'm not left in such a rush to pot up. And here's what it looks like once it's all sifted. The particles are so fine and the roots won't have any troubles navigating through this. Now it's time to pack soil into the cells. I'm using 128 cell trays because I can fit a lot of plants in there. And so I'm just going to make sure that the soil gets into all the holes and pat it down nicely. And now that that's done, I'm going to take an empty tray and I'm going to pat those holes in even farther. And so by doing this, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of holes there. Now I'm just going to pack that down with some more soil to make sure that they're totally full. And then I pack it down, wipe off the edges, and there you go. I'm a really big fan of hydrogen peroxide. This stuff will sterilize anything and it will maximize your chances for success. I know that when you're starting seeds, something that is very common is a fungus called dampening off or fusarium, and it will just destroy your crops. And it's such a shame when you only have limited seeds. So best to start off right and just sterilize. Normally it's best to measure out your hydrogen peroxide to water, the 1-8 dilution, but I just use my eye and it'll work out just fine. So now that this is all mixed together, I'm going to put that tray on top and let the water soak in from underneath. And while that's happening, I'm going to spray on top just so we can saturate this soil from both sides. I find that the soil saturates a lot quicker if I do it this way. Now any gardener will tell you that mislabeling your plants will become a huge nightmare later on in the season for you. There's nothing worse than not knowing what it is you planted and where you put it. And it's so hard to plant a garden properly when you don't know what goes where. So let's just avoid this by doing it right from the beginning. Now something I like to use are these old blinds that I had lying around. I cut them into pieces and now I'll cut them even smaller. And these are just the best. I find that when you write on them with pencil, the sun will not deteriorate them like it would ink. So they will last you the whole season and you will always know what it is that you planted. So here's what I cut up. And I think I went a little overboard and I won't use them all for this round of planting. Now, I actually save the labels from the end of each season because they're completely reusable. You can either erase it if you use pencil or you can use rubbing alcohol to get the writing off if you used ink. I really don't like putting the planted trays directly on top of the heat mat because it's happened to me too many times where those young fragile roots end up burning because it's too hot. So instead, what I like to do is turn these empty trays upside down and then I put the planted trays on top. This way, it keeps the heat more consistent across the bottom, yet a little bit more mild so the plants can always handle it. I prefer to write my labels before I sow the seeds. This way I'm not going back and forth between two jobs with dirty hands. I also like to put the labels into the trays before I sow the seeds. And once that's done, I pre-make the hole for each cell. It feels really good to have all the prep work out of the way first. Now I can just focus on planting. I like to make sure that the labels inside the trays are in the same sequence as the seeds in my binder. This way, I don't have to browse back and forth between the pages to find what I need. So now we're going to take what we think are the best seeds and put them in there. Now we give them a little poke poke, a pat pat, and finally a spray. We want to make sure that the soil is quite moist at this point because those seeds need to resaturate as they've been quite dry. It's important to make sure that the soil is moist but not soggy. Oh, it's so satisfying to see all these planted seeds. And lastly, the tray gets capped with a humidity dome. I find this to be an important step because it locks in the heat that rises up from the tray. So there we have it. That was the entire process of what I go through to start seeds in the beginning of the year. Now, what I do isn't necessarily going to be exactly what you do, sort of like many things in gardening. It's not a fine science and we all have our own styles and it seems to work. Because let's not forget, in nature, a seed will fall onto the ground and it's gonna grow. So how much of what we do is actually necessary in the process versus how much is more ritual? That's a question that's hard to answer. 
So thanks a lot for being with me today and good luck with your grow. So until next time, take care and happy gardening.